Hello class, welcome to the second part of lesson 7, 5.7, Average and Instantaneous Rates of Change. So in the first part, we talked about the average rate of change, and I believe uh, it was a much better explanation uh, than the previous, that the first lesson we had about this. And by now you should understand what the, what the average rate of change of a variable uh, is with respect to another. In this case, we usually use y and x, but remember the names of the variables are not important, okay? It's not gonna be always y and x. Okay, so now today, what are we going to do? Today we're gonna define what an instantaneous rate of change means. And also we're gonna solve this problem, which is finding the instantaneous velocity of a particle at a given time. Okay, so let's start. We're gonna again use Desmos and we're gonna start with this function. Okay, so let's see. What do we have here? We have a function. We know that the y is a function of x. So y is your independent variable. I'm sorry. Y is your dependent variable and X is your independent variable. What is this function in particular? It is the square root of X. Okay, fine. And we already know how to calculate the, the average rate of change over a certain interval. For example, if I told you to calculate the average rate of change, which is this, over a certain interval for which the initial value of x is 1 and the final value of x is 9. All you do is locate your, your points of interest, which is this one. For this point, x equals 1, like we know. And this other point. For this point, x equals 9. Okay, fine. That's it. And then uh, all you need to do is find your delta x. which is all of this, and this is your delta y. By definition, as we know, delta y is the final y minus the initial y over the final value of x minus the initial value of x. In here, we look, we're looking at them graphically. We know what those values are. yf is this value, which is 3. Y, y initial is 1 and x final is 9 minus x initial which is 1 so we have 2 over 8 which is 1 fourth okay so the average rate of change over this interval for this particular function is 1 fourth perfect some one of your classmates asked me, teacher, how do we do this? How do we get how do we get to the same result without looking at the graph? Okay, that was a good question. And all you need to do is this: you are given uh, the initial value of x and the final value of x. So basically, you have already these two values, this one and this one. So how would you find the final value in y and the initial value? In y, well, all you need to do is evaluate your function, which is this one, okay, in these respective two values of x. For example, the final value of y will be nothing but the function evaluated in the final value of x, like so. So basically, if xf is 9, as we know, then evaluate the function in 9, and so yf will be. The function evaluated in 9. What is the function? The function is the square root of x. So basically it's going to be the square root of 9 which is 3. And therefore yf is going to be 3. There you have. See? So you don't really need the, the graph. You can do it analytically in this way. But it's, uh, they're uh, interchangeable. Okay? They're uh, equivalent ways of doing it. Okay, so now we know how to get the average rate of change. It's a very simple thing to do. And now, imagine that somebody asks you the following question. Um, this question, listen. At this point, 
in, in the x-axis, at, at point 1 in the x-axis, what would be the instantaneous rate of change at this point? The instantaneous instantaneous rate of change at that particular point at x equals 1. Right there. What could this possibly mean? Okay, if we get to think a little, we can see that we can get to the answer by a limiting process. Okay, one more time, there's that word in that concept, limit, limit. And it's a very simple idea. We have already encountered this idea before when we dealt with the slope of the tangent to a function. And basically what this means is the following, guys. Imagine that we take, we calculate one more time the average rate of change of this function, but over a smaller interval, starting at one, okay? It will always start at one, but let's not go, let's say, uh, up until nine. Let's, let's make it shorter, like up until four. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. And now that point that was here before, let's actually slide it down over the function. And now let's place it here. So we're, we, are, we are approaching this point that we had before towards the point of interest, which is x equals 1, you see? Okay, so now we have this, and we can calculate one more time the average rate of change, but now over this interval, delta x, and its corresponding delta y. You see? We can calculate, we can find delta y. Let's suppose that we already, we already have it. And delta x in this case is 4 minus 1, which is 3, so we already have it. And then we calculate the average rate of change, which is which is the ratio of delta y over delta x. And, and that's it. That's what we do, okay? And we keep doing that more and more and more and more. We keep approximating this point. You know, we can, we can think of this point as a variable point. It moves... It moves up and down the function at will, at our own uh, will, and we can make it approximate even further to this point. Now let's put it over here, okay? And we do the same thing. Okay, now my interval in x is this. This is my delta x. This is my delta y. We calculate delta y. We know that delta x is 2, and so we calculate or we find the average rate of change. This is still an average rate of change over this rather small interval in, in x, okay? So we find it, and we keep doing it, like I repeat. We keep doing that more and more and more until finally this point will be so close to, to my point of interest, which is x equals 1 will be so close, okay, like so, can you see, okay, that now I may say that in the limiting point, in the limiting point where this, uh, or at the limited, at the, at, at the limiting, um, mm, let's say, uh, step in which this point is pretty much on top of this one pretty much on top of this one not really on top but so close that we can think that the difference in distance between these points is almost zero then at that point at that point that's when we say that the average rate of change now becomes the instantaneous rate of change at point x equals one you see so basically what we did is take the average the average rates of change from uh, from a, um, a further point over here, and then then do it, and then approximate your point one more time, and then calculate delta y and over uh, over delta x, and then approximate the point even more. Do the same thing, delta y over delta x, approximate the point even more, and so on and so on. And the definition is this: at the limit 
at the limit where delta x approaches zero because that's in fact what we are doing you see we are reducing this delta x at that point this thing which is the average rate of change becomes the instantaneous the instant instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x okay that's what it means basically you see it's it's so it's again one more time a limiting process that's that's the main concept that's what you have to understand you are basically reducing your delta x until it's pretty much zero but not equal to zero you see and then it becomes the, the average rate of change which is this becomes the instantaneous rate of change when you take the limit of the average rate of change as delta x approaches zero that's how it works now how do we find it how do we find an instantaneous rate of change well what we do is this you have to think geometrically what does that mean let's go back to the first points at the beginning this and this one more time this is my delta x and this is my delta y there you go so what is the average rate of change over this interval the average rate of change is delta y over delta x okay which is this part in here this segment which in this case is two units divided by this other segment which in this case is eight, which in this case is eight units now you must agree guys that if we think a little bit geometrically we can we can actually relate this this division or this uh, quotient to the following geometrical concept what about doing this look i'm gonna trace the second line that goes through those two points the second line like that okay so think about this second line and think about the slope of this second line a concept which we have already talked about okay the slope of this second line how do we find that slope it's pretty simple right it's just you take those two points and then as you go from one point to the other point you have a run which is this a, a horizontal run and a vertical rise which is in this case delta y then you divide rise over run and that would be the slope do you remember that okay so basically basically what we are doing guys every single time every single time we calculate an average rate of change which is this delta y over delta x we're doing nothing but calculating the slope the slope which is rise over run which is this the slope of the of the second line that goes through those two points of interest you see we're making a geometrical connection between the average rate of change and the slope of the second line that goes through those points concerning such interval you see and with that in mind maybe i i am already suggesting something in your mind what happens when let me raise this thing what happens when we uh, talked about the slope of the tangent let me draw that in yellow okay i'm gonna draw in yellow i'm gonna draw the tangent to the function which is in blue don't don't get don't lose sight of that i'm gonna draw the tangent to the function at that point there you go more or less yes okay how did we find the slope of this tangent do you remember what we this what we did was approximating this point okay towards towards the point of interest you see and then we found then by doing this process the slope of the second uh, approximates 
more and more and more to the to the slope of the tangent and at the limit at the limit we can find the slope of the tangent which is the same that is happening with the with the instantaneous rate of change when you talk about the instantaneous rate of change what you are doing is one more time is reducing that delta x okay so it's going to be so this point is going to be closer you see this is going to be your delta x, this is going to be your delta y, and this is going to be now your second, you see? So basically, it's, it's the same idea. We're going to approximate uh, delta x to zero, and as we do so, the slope of this tangent, I'm sorry, of, of this second, will approximate um, the slope of the tangent, and at the time with this thing is almost zero, almost there, the slope of the second pretty much becomes the slope of the tangent and we are done you see so basically we are talking about the derivative we're talking about the derivative because remember that the derivative at this point the geometrical interpretation of the derivative was in fact the slope of the tangent okay remember if i if i if i ask you uh, give me, you have this function, and give me, give me the slope of the tangent at this point, the slope of this tangent, okay, what did you have to do, you had to calculate the derivative of the, of the function, okay, f prime of x equals, uh, in this case it's going to be one, one half times x to the minus one half, this is the derivative, and then basically all you did now was evaluating the derivative at 4, f prime of 4, which is equal to this. I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not going to do any reductions. And that's it. This number, which can be further simplified, is actually the slope of this tangent to the function at this precise point. And by this geometrical interpretation, that's also th this value guys this value is also the instantaneous rate of change in this case at at four okay because I, I chose this point but if you want to find the instantaneous rate of change at x equals one which is right over here what you do is exactly the same thing what you do is you calculate the derivative of this function we already did it f prime of x equals one half of x to the minus one half and you basically evaluate in this point f prime of one equals one half times one to the minus one half and this number which will be in the end will be one half this is the average rate of change of y with respect to x at this point okay because of the connection that there is between the average rate of change this and the slope there's a connection okay this is the average rate of change and the slope of let me raise this and the slope of the second line that goes through any two points like so okay the slope of the second line so basically it's the same idea we have average rate of change that's the slope of the second and instantaneous rate of change when you take the limit as delta x goes to zero of the average rate of change then we're talking about the slope of the tangent this is the slope of the second like you like here and when you get when, when you want to get the instantaneous rate of change you take this limit as delta x goes to zero this delta this delta x and therefore as delta x goes to zero the slope of this second becomes the slope of this tangent and therefore you have your instantaneous rate of change so basically they are they are interchangeable guys they are interchangeable the the derivative can be interpreted now as two things as the slope of the tangent let me raise one more time i, I gotta keep on erasing a lot you can interpret the derivative of this function at this point 
when you get the derivative and you evaluate at this point, you can interpret that number as the slope of the tangent to this function at this point, or you can also interpret that as the instantaneous rate of change of this variable, the variable y, with respect to the variable x at that precise point. At this precise point, at this precise point, y is changing. Let, let me do. Let me write it one more time. We said that in here at that point, f prime of x is going to be equal to this. And therefore, when we evaluate in one, we get one. This is what we said. No, we get one half. Okay. So what does that mean? How do I? How am I? How am I going to interpret this in two different ways? Okay. I can interpret this as the slope of this tangent to this function at point one. What's going to be the slope? It's going to be one half. And I get it through the derivative. Okay. That is one interpretation of the derivative. What is the other interpretation? Now, in the context of average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change, well, what it means as, a, as an instantaneous rate of change, I'm going to write inst. What it means is this, guys. At this precise point, at this precise point, the variable, the, the, the dependent variable, which is y, is changing half as much as the x variable. Okay, at this precise point. Okay, if you went a little, like, let me, one more time, let me erase this, this thing because we don't need, we already talked about the, the geometrical uh, interpretation as the slope. We, we already have it down. But now the this other analyt, analytical interpretation. If we have this point, okay, at this point, if you went every tiny bit in over here, like every tiny, any, any tiny bit in X, one, one uh, let's call it one small unit. I'm making this up, okay, a small unit. When the X moves one small unit to the right, then, and I'm talking about a very small quantity, this is extremely small, extremely infinitely small, then, the, the y variable, which is the dependent variable, will change, as a result, will change only half as much as this, as, as, the, as the change in x, half as much at this precise point. You see, what this tells you is the behavior of, the, of, your, of your dependent variable, which is y, with respect to the independent variable, over very, sh very small regions over here okay that's what it means that's what that's what instantaneous rate of change means these are very tiny zones very tiny zones i hope i'm not confusing you with that try to get an intuition of what this means it's it's hard it's it's harder than the, understanding this 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 uh this concept the instantaneous rate of change is much harder to understand than the slope of the tangent okay we have two interpretations for the derivative this one is much simpler in my opinion and this one takes a little more time to really take a good grasp on but basically what i want you to understand is that that the instantaneous rate of change of a function basically is the same as the derivative evaluated in that specific point if you want to find the instantaneous rate of change of this function at point six when, when x is equal to 6, get the derivative, there you have it, evaluate it in 6, find the number, whatever number you, you, you uh, come up with now, and that's going to be the instantaneous rate of change at that point, okay? Think a little about these things. I know that perhaps this is not a very, um, like, you, you may leave this class with Mm, more questions than, than answers or like you, you may feel that you don't understand the concept completely well and I want you to to understand that this is perfectly normal it's perfectly normal the any new knowledge that enters into your brain 
especially in mathematics and especially when, with uh, concepts like this, which are kind of abstract, they take time to develop in your brain, okay? They, 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 they are like a little uh, seed, okay? And, and the seed's gonna grow more and more and more with time, but you have to keep on like, you know, like watering it and, and developing, it, developing it and practicing with that, with that idea in order for that idea to grow. But don't 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 make the mistake of thinking, okay, I know, I, I I do not understand this, I give up. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to keep on uh, questioning and and thinking about these ideas and asking me, asking me. Okay, so how much time has has passed? Let me see. Twenty five. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it right there. I don't wanna make this the lessons too too long i think it's kind of productive and even though i say that I, we, we're gonna answer that other question about the instantaneous velocity of a particle i'm gonna relay that for the next week so that's about it guys thank you so much and see you on monday